get everybody's attention, I want to welcome everyone to the Metropolitan Planning Commission March 28th, 2019 meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. Appreciate everybody coming down, and I'm going to just take a, a quick second of personal privileges. Uh, I know there, the, today is a big day. I know that you all know that. Today, um, there's a big basketball game at 630. <laughs> Uh, NCAA tournament, uh, there's only 16 universities that are playing left, and so uh, keep your comments brief. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but it is at 6.30 tonight, and um, I know that uh, there's a lot of excitement around that game, so I hope, um, I know I'm going to try to watch it if we get out of here soon enough. So anyway, sorry I was out of order. Uh, now we'll get into... The adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. There's a motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. Now we're on item C, the approval of March 14th, 2019 minutes. Those were mailed out to you um, ahead of time. Any questions, additions? We'll need a motion to approve. Is there a motion? Second? Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and those minutes are adopted. Now we are on to the recognition of the council members. And as we, uh, we just take, take these as we see you all come in, to be fair. And so uh, I first saw Councilor Haywood. You want to speak now or during the, all right, perfect, perfect. And then second, I saw Council Lady Elect, Porterfield. Come on up, Council Lady. Tomorrow is her, I think, the final election, correct? Well, welcome, and we, we appreciate you coming down, and uh, it's nice to see you. Thank you so much, and you are correct. I will be sworn in on tomorrow. I'm coming uh, regarding item number 14, and I'm asking for a three-meeting deferral on this item um, in order to give the community enough time to have a community meeting and to hear the concerns. Some of the constituents have brought concerns about the project. And they're not sure what, the, uh, what this particular project will entail, and we would like the opportunity to explore that. You're doing your job right away, <laughs> even before. So that's great. We'll, um, we'll make sure we put it into the deferrals. Okay. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. you coming down. Thank you. All right. I saw uh, Councilman Kendall. You want to you go now or come on up, sir? Welcome. I've got a game. I've got to go up. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> He's teasing you. <laughs> He's teasing. Which game are you going to? I'm here. Uh, well, first of all, good evening. Uh, I'm here on item number 29. Uh, which has been recommended disproved by the staff. Uh, this is a piece of property that is owned by Dr. Worthy, who has a dental office in the community on the same street. Uh, I think several months ago, you approved a project just a block up from this, where there are going to be three units on a piece of property about the same size as this. Uh, you did approve those. This piece of property, I understand, I'm not sure what the disapproval is. I think it might be because of the size of the property. I, I'm not sure. But uh, Dr. Worthy has a fine reputation for building quality structures in the community. He owns a, another piece of property, which is a quadruplex across the street from this property on uh, D.B. Todd, facing D.B. Todd. It's all brick. This one is going to be all brick, and it's... My understanding is it's going to be affordable or at least workforce housing at a rental rate of from 11 to $1,300, which is unheard of in the 21st district. Uh, as all of you know, probably know, I'm a strong proponent of getting some affordable housing into the area. Uh, it's hard to do. Everybody wants every dollar off of every piece of dirt they can find. So this is an opportunity, I think, to add some affordable housing to District 21. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, the property is located on a corner. Uh, prior to uh, Dr. Worthy making this application, there was a triplex already on the corner, but it was a dilapidated triplex that had been there for many, many years, and it's been torn down. Uh, right next to this property is a house 
But then next to that, there's also a triplex, which sits almost right on the street, and it's an older triplex. But I, but I think this property will, will definitely add to, to the community, if you can find a way to fit it on that property. I'm not sure what the, uh, the real problems are with that, but uh, it would certainly, I think, benefit. We had a meeting the other night with the NNOIC, which is a neighborhood group. Many of you know the members of that group, uh, Edith Langster and several others. Uh, they were strongly in favor of this. Uh, we voted 100% to support Dr. Worthy on this effort. So I appreciate your consideration on this to support it. Thank you, Councilman. And just to be clear, so this item is on the consent agenda, but let me explain okay. uh, real quick and we'll pass over to the director to give you the details. But it was disapproved as submitted, but the department um, staff is recommending approval of R6A and Lucy's gonna explain what that means. All right. So first, because we had a lot of activity uh, before uh, we sat down, Lisa, can I confirm, is item 29 still on consent? It was five minutes before the meeting started, but. We have had someone that has requested that item be to, to be pulled and presented. Okay, so then I, my, the chairman uh, is, is stated it correctly that we recommended disapproval, but we are approving, recommending approval of a zone change that would permit some additional intensity. So that may address some of your comments, but in this instance, the commission will now be hearing the case, and so um, they'll have an opportunity to weigh all of the, the issues. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Appreciate it. Any other council members? Seeing none, we'll go on to item E, items for deferral withdrawal. Lisa. The following items are for deferral or withdrawal. Item number one, 2019-Z008PR001, on page five of your agenda. Staff recommendation is to withdraw. Item number two, 2018-Z010TX001, on page five. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item number four, 2019 SP 006001, the Third Avenue North SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to April 11th Planning Commission meeting. Item number five, 2019 SP 010001 on page six of your agenda. Zero Shannon Avenue SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item number eight, 2019 SP 017001, 7335 Old Charlotte Pike SP, staff recommendation is to withdraw. Item number 10, 2018 S210001 on page seven of your agenda, the Mosswood Lot 57 subdivision amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 11th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 11, 2019 S032001, Resubdivision of lot of part of lot 10 on the plan of Alpine Terrace subdivision. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 11th Planning Commission meeting. <laughs> Item number 12, 2019S039001 on page 7 of your agenda. 4830 Payne Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 13A on page seven, your agenda, Harding Place Center PUD cancellation. The staff recommendation is to defer to, pay, to May 9th planning commission meeting. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item 13B, 20669P001, Harding Place Center PUD amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the May 9th planning commission meeting. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number 14, on page eight of your agenda, 2019-Z023-PR001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the May 9th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 15, 2019-Z035-PR001, on page eight of your agenda. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. 
Item number 18, 2019 SP 020001 on page nine of your agenda, the Pettus Road SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 11th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 22, 2019 S 045001 on page 10 of your agenda. Staff recommendation is to defer to April 11th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 23, 2019 S 047001, 2306 Donna Hill Court. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 31 on page 11 of your agenda, 2019 Z 044 PR 001. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 11th Planning Commission meeting. Thank you, Lisa. So, commissioners, let's go down the list and make sure we got all of the items because we've had some added to this list. So, the items that we have are items 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13A, and B, 14, 15, 18, 22, 23, and 31. Is that correct? Yes. All right, commissioners, you've heard the items for deferral withdrawal. Any, is there a motion? There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and those items are deferred or withdrawn. Now we are on to item F, which is the consent agenda. Lisa. As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. As noticed to the public, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. The following items are on the consent agenda. Item number three, 2019 SP 001001 on page five of your agenda. The third in Jefferson SP. It's a request to rezone from CS and IWD to SP for zone, zoning on properties located on Third Avenue North and Jefferson Street to permit a mixed use development. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number six on page six of your agenda, 2019 SP 011001, the Hampton Corner SP. It's a request to rezone from OR20 and RS 7.5 to SP for properties located at 1609 and 1613 Ham Hampton Street and on Brick Church Pike to permit 37 multifamily residential units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number seven on page six of your agenda, 2019 SP 013001, the Trinity Summit SP. It's a request to rezone from RS 7.5 and CL to SP zoning for properties located on North Avondale Circle and Brick Church Pike to permit 25 multifamily residential units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number nine, 2019 SP 019001, the 314 and 316 Duke Street SP. It's a request to rezone from R6A to SP for properties located on Duke Street to permit five multifamily residential units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 17A, 2019 CP 013001, the Antioch Priest Lake Community Plan Amendment. It's a request to amend the community plan by changing the policy from neighborhood maintenance to district office concentration for properties located on South Perimeter Park Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve. The associated case item 17B, 2019 Z 038PR 001 on page nine. Staff recommendation, I'm sorry, it's a request to rezone from CS and R10 to OG zoning on properties located on South Perimeter Drive and partially within a planned unit development. Staff recommendation is to approve if the associated plan amendment is approved. 
Item number 17C, 868P001, also associated with 17A and B. It's a request to amend a planned unit development for properties located on a South Perimeter Park Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions subject to approval of the associated zone change. Item number 20, 2019-S-040001, the Drake Morris property. It's a request for final plat approval to create two lots on property located on Brick Church Pike. Staff recommendation is to approve, including approval of variances to the rural subdivision regulations for lot size, area, and frontage. Item number 21 on page 10, 2019-S-041001, resubdivision of lot six, People's Estate. It's a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located on Liberty Lane. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item 24, 192-69P-004, the Hickory Plaza PUD revision and final. It's a request to revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for a portion of a PUD for property located on Nolensville Pike to, per to permit a restaurant and retail building. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item 25, 2019 NHC 001001, the Kenner Manor Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay. It's a request to apply a Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay District to various properties along Kenner Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 26, 2019Z, 036PR001. It's a request to rezone from R20 to IWD zoning for property located on Couchville Pike. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 27, 2019Z040PR001. It's a request to rezone from R8 to MUGA for properties located on West Trinity Lane. Staff recommendation is to disapprove as submitted and approve RM20A. Item number 28, 2019-Z-041-PR-001. It's a request to rezone from RS-15 to MULA zoning for property located on Central Pike. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item 30, 2019-Z-043-PR-001. It's a request to rezone from R8 to IWD for property located on Haney Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve, and I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Under other business, item number 32, a contract renewal for Letitia Birkeland, Elham Daha, and Elwin Gonzalez. And item number 36, to accept the director's report and approve administrative items. Thank you, Lisa. So. On the consent agenda, um, some of these items have changed too. So let's go through this slowly so we can get the proper numbers. Um, so items for the consent agenda, items three, six, seven, nine, 17A, 17B, 17C, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32 and 36, is that correct? Correct. Commissioners, you've heard those items that are on the consent agenda. Is there a question? I wanted to note my recusal from three, number three. Item number three. Commissioner Blackshear recused herself from item three. Anything, any other discussion? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And those items have been approved. And now, and then we didn't, I didn't see Councilman Davis, and he is in here. Councilman Davis, we'll go back to recognition of council members. Come on up. It's good to see you. <coughs> Welcome. Um, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for volunteering your time. Um, I have two items that um, at the sponsor's request and at my request will be deferring. Um, uh, one's on North 6th Street and I don't have a number in front of me. Item 16A and B which were um, scheduled to be heard up until this point which we'll be recommending deferral but it would be great to have some comments put into the record. Thank you. Okay. Um, a couple reasons. Um, 
those items need to be deferred. There's been some new developments and also, you know, I won't be here because you have, have a family emergency I have to deal with. And more importantly, um, you know, once again, it gives us another bite at certain apples to bring approved bills. And I thank the sponsors for agreeing to the deferrals of these, of these pieces of legislation. And, you know, God bless you all. I'll see y'all next week or two weeks from now. Thank you, Councilman. We'll need a motion to defer item 16A to one. Councilman, I'm just confirming one meeting. Councilman Davis. Councilman Davis. Sorry. One meeting. One meeting. Or. I am saying one right now, but I'm suggesting to the applicants, can they write in to get more if they need to? Because, you know, we're trying to make sure, you know, stuff goes to the associations first. I know that the timing's off. I think the next meeting you guys meet the same day as Cleveland Park, and, or, or one week you meet as the same day as another one too. So we it may be, I'll do it one right now so no one, so can we, so can they? So, so we'll my, my recommendation I think would, would be to do a one meeting deferral for now, mm -hmm. um, and depending on those discussions, we may recommend an additional deferral in the future. Based on my understanding of where this has been in terms of the community, yeah. was that there were not cosmetic issues with this, that there were some substantive concerns, and that would probably take more than a meeting to okay. defer, but I don't want to speak on either side for the community or, 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 for, the or the, for the developer in this instance, so I would just say that the safest thing is one meeting and then we'll see where we go. Thank you. I so, agree. Commissioners, you've heard the recommendation, but we'll, we'll need to have a motion in order to do that. Oh, get microphone on, uh, Commissioner. Yep. Uh, I move we defer item 16A and 16B for uh, one meeting. It's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Any dis other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and that's deferred. Thank you, Councilman. Appreciate you coming down. So, that means that we are considering items, two items, items number uh, 19 and 29. And so if you're here for any of the other items, they've already been taken care of. Appreciate everybody coming down. And turn your TV on at 6.30. Item 19. Ma'am, ma hold on. So the way, so just, uh, I know some of you have been down here for the first time, so we'll, I'll explain it to you just real quick is we'll do the presentation of it and then um, the applicant has time to speak and then uh, the people on both sides, so the, the proponents and the opponents have time to speak and we'll call you up. So it, it's easy peasy. Don't be nervous. All right. Go ahead, item 19. Next item on the agenda is item number 19. This is a final plat request to create three lots. Staff's recommendation is to approve. The site is located in a large area of one and two family residential zoning, also known as the R10 zoning district. The site is located at 575 Tulip Grove Road, approximately 485 feet north of Ashley Way. The pro this proposal is to create three lots. Each lot has at least 39,000 square feet of area or greater and at least 72 feet of road frontage. Each lot also orients to Tulip Grove Road. Each lot meets the minimum standards of the R10 zoning district and has frontage along a public street. Staff finds that this proposal meets the requirements of the subdivision regulations, given the aforementioned staff's recommendations to approve. Thank you, sir. And we'll open this item for public hearing and the applicant. Come on up. You know the drill. You got 10 minutes. You can save two minutes of the 10 for rebuttal. Welcome. Oh 
Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Dwayne Cuthbertson, 1806 Allison Place. Uh, I'll be brief. As the staff has suggested to you, this subdivision meets the subdivision regulations. We're proposing three lots out of 2.78 acres. Um, uh, each lot's going to contain just under an acre. It's considerably, considerably less dense than most of the context behind and in front of us on Tulip Grove Road. Um, the subdivision, the proposed subdivision contains a, a multitude of conditions that help meet uh, whatever character is out there. Uh, this subdivision will limit access to one point. Uh, it also limits parking to the side or rear of the houses. We've also got conditions related to building height, two stories and 35 feet. Um, which is considerably less than the uh, existing zoning allows. Uh, these are also, all three are noted as critical lots. They're steep slopes toward the middle uh, of this site. So those, that critical lot denotation will ensure that each building permit is reviewed and uh, planning staff and others will make sure that we stay off the, that slope and then consequently stay out of the wooded area to the back of the lots. The, the, the homes that are proposed will uh, be located closer to Tulip Grove. Uh, road. Um, with this subdivision, this is a major street, we'll be required to put in sidewalk infrastructure here. Um, these building permits will also be subject to stormwater review and we'll have to comply with all the regulations that are in place today. Uh, so I just reiterate that uh, this subdivision that we're proposing meets the regulations, uh, meets the, the policy and uh, zoning requirements. It's considerably less dense than everything around it. So uh, with that, we just ask for your approval. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming down. We'll reserve two minutes for rebuttal. And anyone in the room wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. And, and so you have two minutes, and the timer is right there. And welcome, and please state your name and your address for the record. Linda LaCary, 609 Hidden Hill Drive. We are on lot 107 on that plat. Our concern is not with the zoning, and our concern is not actually with the development of the property. Our concern is with the development up the hill. Um, I had a moment to speak with Dwayne here, and he explained the critical lot features. I'm still not very clear on that. We've had very little communication about this property development, aside from little cards that came in the mail every six or eight months. Um, that is really just my concern, is that is a very steep slope. <clears throat> there is a, an animal habitat up there, not that I'm you know, really into that, but there are deer that roam our neighborhood already because most of the wooded areas in that neighborhood have been completely destroyed. So our concerns are for erosion, our concerns are for environmental impact, and we have not seen any of the survey information that has been done on that property. And shortly before the meeting started, we became aware that there's a possible right-of-way issue with this property. I honestly have never been to a commission meeting before, so I don't really know how much I should say or not say and what I can do about it. But those are my concerns. Thank you. Very well spoken. And uh, once we end the public hearing, then we'll, I'm sure the commissioners will, will ask questions about um, your issues. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Come on up. Welcome. My name is Donnie Bell, and I'm, when he or was Say your name one more time in the mic. Donnie Bell. And address. 267 Richbride Road. But on Tulip Grove Road, my wife owned the property right next to this property he was speaking about a while ago. And my concern is about the, the footage and everything. He said something like 2.7 acres. Uh, sir, you have to speak to the Okay, 2.7 acres? Uh, I believe so. Okay, now, I'm looking at 2.3, and what I'm saying that I want to make sure everything's going to come out right, because I guess back in the 80s, 88, 87, somewhere, her grandfather sold a, a right-of-way for someone to go up to the top of that hill. And I'm trying to figure out that they don't miscalculate when they start putting the foot in and go into my property on the other side and cut me out of something. Yes, sir. So I think we can address that uh, during the hearing. Okay. Okay. Any other concerns that you have? That's the only concern I got. I just want to be, everything's, I don't want to get into a long, drawn out battle once they start digging and doing all this up in there and find out they over here somewhere they shouldn't be. Yes, sir. 
I appreciate you coming down. Okay. We'll, we'll make I appreciate sure. you listening to me. It's the first time I've been up here. I hope it's the last. Oh, we're a friendly group. <laughs> we're a friendly group most so. of the time. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for coming. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. How you doing? Uh, my name is John Jacobus. I actually, for some reason, I don't understand uh, these prints, but there's two lots, 107s. I'm lot 107, the long one on the, I guess, looking at this uh, would be the, uh, well, I'm the long 107. I'm not sure which direction it is. It's on top of the proposed lot. Um, our only concern, my neighbor, who's actually in lot uh, 069, uh, is uh, privacy fence, if they establish whatever they establish on that lot, if there will be some sort of fence to, you know, uh, continue. So we may have continued privacy along that. And what's your address, sir? Mine is uh, 519 Hidden Hill Drive. So my property actually extends halfway into the proposed, alongside the proposed plan. Thank you, sir. Appreciate and uh, I do right now have a, a Pretty private area. I've got a large shop back there um, with a lot of uh, a lot of tools, automobiles, classic automobiles, stuff like that that I'd be concerned about. Um, if they build up close to it, alongside it, what kind of privacy I would have would be a con my only concern, really. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming in. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. My name's Robert Hill. I, I'm living right behind the property that's going to be there. And what's I your live, address, sir? Uh, mine is 601 Hidden Hill. Thank you. And my concern is just the privacy. Now, the way I understand it, they're going to build the buildings down toward Tulip Grove Road. Yes, the developers shaking their head yes. So, but we'll get we'll we'll get it worked out when we have the hearing. We'll ask them that. Okay. That's, that, that was my concern, privacy. I've been living there 40 years, and there ain't nothing behind me but woods, so. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming down. Anyone else? Seeing no one else, two-minute rebuttal. Come on up. And if you could address some of those. Sure, concerns. Mr. Thanks. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, uh, being that these are noted critical lots, again, when we apply for building permits, they're critical lots because planning staff identified some sensitive features, environmental features, one of those being the slopes. So they're gonna make sure that those slopes in the middle of these properties stay undisturbed. Again, consequently, we're not going to propose anything on the back end of these properties. The intent is to leave that entirely undisturbed from the slopes on back. So you're gonna have 250 feet of at least 250 feet of undisturbed property, probably more, uh, between any form of development and the neighbors to the back. Um, so uh, erosion controls, again, stormwater measures, we're gonna have to put those in place before we do any form of development. Um, so uh, the owner's here and um, you know, he's going to talk with some of the, the people who spoke and talk about privacy. He's open to a privacy fence, but I think uh, I'm hopeful they'll find that once they discover they're going to leave it undisturbed, that, that wooded area is probably a better treatment of that boundary than any form of fence. Um, this, I've also talked to the gentleman who's concerned about the survey. Uh, I'm going to put him in touch with the surveyor. We have to rely on the, cert the survey the surveyor. They certify that the boundaries are, are true and accurate, and that's all we have to go on. So I will put him in touch with the surveyor to make sure that the information they used is current uh, and accurate. And if they find evidence of, a, of an easement, certainly we have to honor that. Uh, so I'll make sure that all parties are, are speaking to each other. Thank you, sir. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. And before we get started, we do have um, a newer member of the commission, so it's probably a good time to review uh, about subdivisions. Lucy, you want to just give us the lowdown about? You'll be the new member for about six months, Ro, and then you'll have to explain it all. <laughs> um, so state law authorizes the Planning Commission to adopt subdivision regulations to accomplish harmonious development, and these can include things like block structure, location of streets, and the like. To clarify, this is not a rezoning. 
subdivisions occur under existing entitlements. It's simply the division of land. So these don't go to council. These remain with the Planning Commission as you are in a judicial role. And your role here is really to apply the subdivision regulations that you've noticed and that um, essentially set forth what the rules will be, not only for the property owner and the development community, but for the neighbors. So the subdivision regulations are just simply the rules that you apply to divide the land. And um, sometimes I get asked what the policy's role is. The policy is limited when it comes to subdivision regulations. It is simply directs us to the section of the rules with which um, that, that you would apply. And so in this instance, staff has determined that this meets all standards of the subdivision uh, regulations. That was a great reminder, and it's good to have continued education for commissioners uh, so we don't get sued. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Haynes, you want to go first? Um, I think this is fairly straightforward. I support staff's conclusion and recommendation. Thank you. Commissioner Sims? I certainly understand that this is more of an adjudication process, but what happens when the, I mean, you can't by law do away with public feedback, I mean, it calls, even the law of well, subdivisions calls for a public hearing. So how does the feedback during a public hearing get fed into the subdivision rules then? So, um, well, this is a long, this could be a long conversation. So that's okay. Um, so essentially, the, the subdivision regulations, like anything we do, are subject to public review and comment. And so we have vetted these subdivision regulations with the communities that, that, that they govern. And so essentially, we will publish that these are the regulations, and then communities can respond to those. And then I would say, at, as projects come in and you're applying those regulations, is if issues are raised, then you take that into account in your review, but, but it is incumbent on the commission to um, apply the standards before them and not add, if you've got four standards you're looking at, not add a fifth that hasn't received that public comment. Does that, I'm afraid I wasn't, does that answer your question, do you think? The answer is probably more complicated than we mm -hmm. can do here, but um, I do, I, I am concerned that, um, that the public comes, by law it has the right to come, we hear it, and yet if we have no way of taking into effect what they say to us, why does it exist at all? And so I'm worried about a little bit about what we do, although I fully trust the developer and the owner, I think that sometimes there are conditions that are brought up that has to move beyond just Trust me, trust my word on this. So how well, do we do that? Well, I hear that. And I, you know, I think this is a broader conversation. You all received an invitation yes. to a, a work session on, on subdivisions because I sense that that was a question yes. because I think there is a different way that state law looks at subdivisions versus right. Right. questions where we're changing right. entitlements. Right. And that is very clearly a community right. oriented discussion in the mere fact that council has to approve changes yes. in entitlements. So. And I would tell you that, you know, our subdivision rules are our rules and that um, that's why we're having a, a work session on it. And if we determine that there is a rule that is outdated or we need to add another rule because of community concerns, then we can do that. But we can't do it in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like you start the football game, and then second half you're like, we're going to get rid of, you know, something that's already a rule, right. uh, kind of like the Saints game, right? <laughs> so, um, it's a bad example, I guess, but I'm a simple-minded person. You've been watching too much sports. Too many sports, way too many. <laughs> I, um, think so, yeah. if I'm, I think sometimes, I think sometimes there, if there's, like they bring up, the, them they, but the public brings up a point that maybe a little bit the staff wasn't sure on, and maybe we, they give us enough information that we can, um, bring up a point. I think it, it happens, but we just, as long, it's more of like one of those kind of issues where maybe staff was not totally sure, but they went one way, and then because of the public response, 
we're able to justify it based on policy. So. And I understand that. I think I, I hear that question a lot from neighborhood groups. I just wondered how we address that. But I think this does follow all the rules. I hope you keep your word to the neighbors. I wish you had met with them before. I mean, I always encourage people to talk to their neighbors, be good neighbors from the very beginning. But I agree with the staff. Commissioner Gattel. I agree with Commissioner Haynes. All right. Commissioner Moore. Councilman. No comment. Commissioner Elam. Commissioner Blackshear. Anyone else? <laughs> Commissioner Blackshear. Oh, the motion. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean. <laughs> well, it sounds like the developer um, is addressing the concerns of the neighborhood with the privacy, the erosion, and then also the right of way. Um, and then obviously, it looks like it meets the criteria. Um, to be properly subdivided. So I will go ahead and make a motion to approve staff's recommendation of approval with conditions. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no, ayes have it. And it is item 19 is adopted with conditions. We're on to item 29. And I do want to say thanks y'all for coming down. We will we try to address all the concerns. So thank you very much. All right. Item 29. The next item on this evening's agenda is item 29. This is a request to rezone from RS5 to RM20A. Staff's recommendation is to disapprove as submitted and approve of R6A. The site is located at 1736 Knoll Street at the northeast corner of Dr. D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard in Knoll Street. The site is currently vacant and contains 0.19 acres. The current land use pattern within the neighborhood consists of single family homes with some two family homes located within the surrounding blocks. The site is currently zoned RS5, which requires a minimum 5,000 square foot lot is intended for single, single family dwellings. RS5 would permit a maximum of one single family residential lot. The policy for the site is T4 Urban Neighborhood Maintenance, which is intended to maintain the general character of existing urban residential neighborhoods. These areas will experience change over time when buildings are expanded or replaced. Um, efforts should be made to retain the existing character of the existing neighborhood. The requested zoning, which is the most intense multifamily zoning district supported by the neighborhood maintenance policy, would permit a maximum of four dwelling units on the site. The requested zoning would introduce a level of intensity which is not reflected within the surrounding neighborhood. While some multifamily uses exist within the area, the development of a single parcel at the proposed intensity of RM20A would be inconsistent with the residential use pattern surrounding the site. While some intensity may be appropriate for this site given its location on an arterial street, Dr. D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard, the requested RM20A zoning will not maintain a consistent level of intensity which currently exists within the multifamily SPs to the north and south of this site as shown on screen. The SP located to the north of this site contains three dwelling units on a total of 0.29 acres. This level of intensity is consistent with the RM9A zone district. The SP to the south contains four dwelling units on 0.34 acres. This level of intensity is consistent with the RM15A zone district. Each of the nearby SP sites contain a lower level of intensity on a larger lot when compared to the size and the intensity for the site we are considering. The requested zone change represents inconsistent residential character when compared to the existing pattern of the surrounding neighborhood. The most intense zone district staff would support in this location is R6A given the policy, location, and context. And in conclusion, staff's recommendation is to disapprove as submitted and approve of R6A. Thank you very much. We'll open this item for public hearing. And the app, is the applicant in the room? Come on up. 
Welcome. You got 10 minutes and you can save two minutes of the 10 for rebuttal. And state your name and address. Thank you, sir. Good evening. I'm Dr. Art Worthy. I'm a general dentist. I have been for the last 44 years and still practice. On DB Todd, 1700 DB Todd is where my office is located. 1736 is where the proposed site is. Directly across the street, across Nose, there's a four unit apartment building similar to what we're proposing for a three unit on the opposite side that, that I built in 2012. Fully occupied. Next to that building, on the, there's another four unit that I own. Uh, down nose, beside, right beside the proposed lot is a single family house that I own, and bordering that is an alley. I, I, I think uh, the quality of the buildings that I've built, solid <laughs> brick exterior, uh, a solid concrete firewall between each unit. Uh, these units would house 1,500 square feet per unit, which you don't find very many of in the area of costs that it would cost to rent one of my units, okay? And I purposely do that because I believe in affordable housing. I, I just, <clears throat> my name's Steve Higgs, and, and I'm working with Dr. Worthy on these units. I'm the architect, and just a couple of points. Um, the, the property that is in question, um, 1736, there was a triplex there for many, many years, and Dr. Worthy bought the property, was it last year? 2018. 2018 and demolished it. So we, we don't feel like we're changing the fabric. He called me, he said, I want to come back with a, another triplex in its place. So um, it's, it was a triplex all the way until I think 2008, and it was, you said it was, they were using it all the way in the 70s. Yes. So it's, it was that way for many years. And the only reason that the zoning changed was is that there was a fire and the applicant um, submitted a permit. And then at that time she changed it to a single family. Um, and I think it was for cost savings. So. Um, but what we, what we, we appreciate that the uh, planning staff is, uh, is allowing us to go with a, um, a higher density than what is there, but uh, the triplex is really what we want to put back, and it's all of Dr. Worthy's units are affordable living, and um, we have the support of the Neighborhood Association. We had a meeting about a week and a half ago, as the councilman said, he had 100% support. And we also have the support of Ed Kendall, who really appreciated the fact that we would be adding at least another affordable housing unit. And reading the paper in the past few days, I understand that that is uh, something that the mayor is real interested in. Um, so Dr. Worthy has been providing affordable housing in this neighborhood that he works in for over 20 years. So we hope that we can approve the three units. And the reason for the zone change of the RM20A was that when I talked to the planning staff, they said that in order to get three units on this lot, that is the zoning that we needed to, to get three. We don't, uh, we understand that four is the most that we could get on there, but three is what we're planning for. So. Thank you, sir. We'll, anything else? Gentlemen, we'll save uh, two minutes for rebuttal. Appreciate you. Anyone in the room wishing to speak in support? Come on up. Welcome. My State your name, name and address. Taylor. I live at 1411 Dr. D.B. Todd Boulevard, diagonally across from where the proposed uh, building is, and also a member of NNOIC, North Nashville Organization for Improvement. I think it would be best <clears throat> to add one more place for people to have a decent place to live. And it's, it's real respect, it's, it's what we really need in that neighborhood because of gentrification and people being pushed out because they can't afford to live there. So that's why I think it should be approved for three. And there were three there. I've lived there 22 years 
and there were three there when I moved there. There were three separate houses, one facing um, Knowles and two facing D.B. Todd. And uh, I think it would enhance the neighborhood more than it would hurt the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for coming down. We appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none. Uh, no need for rebuttal, I guess, since there's no opposition. Is that okay? I'll make sure with the applicant. Okay. Uh, so we'll declare that seeing no one else wishing to speak, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner Tibbs, you want to speak? I was still trying to see. So that is true. R6A, they can only get two units and not three. Right. R6A is one and two families. So the most that it would permit is um, is two units. Um, and RM20 would be four. RM15, um, which is kind of between those, would permit three. Okay. And But that would um, get away from the density policy of the... <coughs> A T4. So there is a there's a, a mixture right. along that road. The two SPs that have been um, approved um, somewhat recently. The one to the north um, is around uh, 10 units per acre, and the one t just across the street from this one is around 12 units per acre. Oh. Looking at it from a comparison of the the density um, yeah. as opposed to the zoning because those are SPEs, but the one to the south has four units on around um, 0.34 acres. So we're looking at about 0.19. So this one is, is a little bit smaller um, than either of those to the north or the south. But mm -hmm. from a density standpoint, you're looking at around 10 to 12 for those two SPEs. Um, to get back to three would be a, a RM15. To R RM15. But you didn't recommend that um, to 15, though. Right. Staff was recommending R6, um, given the size of the property mm -hmm. um, and the context. Uh, we were recommending that that would give a slight increase of intensity over what is sure. currently permitted, sure. um, but wouldn't be exceeding those SPs that are nearby. Okay. Um, and I, I guess. It's, uh, and that's where I was going. It seemed like it was, um, it was kind of contextual, but I didn't want to, you know, break out that policy if possible. Um, so I was, that's why I was curious if we could still get it, maybe, especially since you brought up the um, 15. Um, I'm going to listen for a while. Commissioner Blackshear. This may have not have been appropriate consideration, but was any consideration given to the fact that there was an operating triplex on this lot for, I guess, 20 or so years? So we researched the history of the triplex with Metro codes. Um, we did not have any records or indicate that a triplex was ever legal per any previous zoning on the lot. So, um, how does it work when you have non-conforming uses? I know we've talked about this before. Um, is there a possibility of grandfathering in a non-conforming use? How does that process work? So it would be on the applicant uh, to prove that their legality existed before regulations were in place that would otherwise prevent them from doing so. So a lot of times NES records are yeah. something that we use to prove um, unit count on the lot for a non-conforming, a legal non-conforming use. So that's a possibility if the applicant were able to prove that there was a triplex operating in that area that was legally operating there. So it was there before there were any, uh, I guess, zoning or other, other policies that would prevent it from operating there legally, if they were to do that, then would you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but would it make it an easier approval to allow, I don't know, maybe that would be an SP instead of an actual zone change, but would that, I guess, make you more likely to approve? Um, it may, but that determination you? is made by the codes department. I got you. Okay. I'll listen. Well, I, the app, I saw the applicant raise his hand. I think he has more information, Commissioner Blackshear, <coughs> very quickly. 
Yes, yeah, so since the, the application changed in 2008, my understanding is it's 30 months um, that you can actually um, use a grandfather. And when I talked to um, the, a zoning um, app um, administrator over at the zoning, she told me that before 1982, that basically in Nashville, a lot of properties, anything went. So they, they built things and then after 1982, um, they start, they had some ordinance where, you know, you had to go by the Metro zoning code. So this was, this predated that. And because in 2008, when she changed it, that the 30 months is over. I did talk to the, um, planning about an SP and they told me that an SP, they would not approve an SP. Now, I think the SP has to go through planning, if my understanding. So they can okay. go up or down on that. So thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, thank okay. you. Thank you. Michigan. One qu quick question for the applicant. Oh, come on back up. Where are you? Do you know if the triplex was occupied when it was dem demoed? Uh, I talked to Dr. Worthy, who works in the neighborhood. Um, he told me that since 2015, um, uh, they were someone in that been occupied, and then after that date, it was about 2015 uh, or 16 in that time that it's been vacant ever since. So it has been used as a, a multi-complex for a while. Uh, I think even after 2008, the applicant still used it that way, even though she, uh, according to the people that lived around there, so. <laughs> We've had this situation in our Thank neighborhood, you. actually. The, the, I think the issue comes when a property is vacated that the clock starts ticking because the, the, uh, the meters are shut off. So um, we had an exactly similar situation and, and because the property was empty, um, it, it, it's harder to get the grandfather. I don't know if that would even come into play, but just that's been a recent experience. Councilman? Uh, it's, I don't know if this is permitted, but I was looking at uh, Google Maps and it looks like, uh, can I introduce that in the conversation? We don't use Google here. <laughs> no, you can, no, you can, I mean, you can make an argument any way, shape or form and you can reference Google. Well, uh, it looks like there is a development right across the street uh, with higher density. And uh, I don't understand why uh, it's an issue to have more density when we have it right across the street. I think that certainly the policy um, supports a range of zoning districts. Um, up to RM20A is on the higher end. Um, RM15A would, would maybe support what they're looking for. And so it, DB Todd is a corridor. Um, so the policy supports a range. So if you all found it appropriate, I think it would be certainly something you could look at. And if, and if you wanted to- I find that appropriate. If you wanted to consider the RM15A, I would look at you know the location on the corridor the adjacency to other uses and the like, because we need to give a policy justification for it in addition to what you've already put on the record. Okay. Well, I, 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 I don't wanna get into the specifics of what uh, number, what density we're going to go for, but I, I think that uh, we can bump it up mostly because there's no opposition, the council member is in support, we already have some density across the street, so I would recommend that we go higher uh, with all due respect to the staff. Uh, so, but that's just my opinion. Thank you. So I agree with that. I guess what would be the steps necessary? Is that something that can happen today? Does that need to go through another process if we- It can happen today. I mean, uh -huh. I think it's to the chairman to decide if you wanted to entertain the other comments, but if you, if, if there was a general consensus, you could basically make a recommendation to amend the staff report and approve RM15A, and I would just put in the record based on context and location on a corridor or something, so we have information about the policy decision um, okay. that was, that you based your decision on. <laughs> And Commissioner Moore, that's kind of what I was trying to yeah. dig up some information for. So I support RM15A if 
Yeah. Anybody else wants to keep talking about it, but that's kind of where I was trying to go. Yeah. Um, well, I'll hear from the rest of our commissioners, but. Commissioner Gavin? No, I could support RM 15A. We've got neighborhood in support of a higher density. Uh, we've got a history anyway, whether. So it makes sense to me. All right, Commissioner Sims? No questions. Uh, I too would support higher density uh, on this corridor. This is a long time reputable citizen of this district, so I think RM15 makes sense. So we'll need a motion and a reason, and the, the, the director is giving you some pointers on <laughs> why it makes sense. I mean, it is on a major corridor. There are definitely things that make sense, right? Am, I being, am I being too pushy? No, no, you should. <laughs> and may I also offer whoever makes the motion, let's go ahead and keep the disapprove as submitted because they did request RM20. So that will help keep the record straight for us that and go from there. So, Mr. Haynes, you want to, or Commissioner Moore? Who, sure, I'll try. Okay. Um, I recommend staff's recommendation of disapproval, but modify the approval part from R6A to R15A. No, R15. RM15. RM15. Excuse me. RM15A. There you go. Based on the fact that this sits on a corridor, on a corner location with density across the street. That's a proper motion. Commissioner Moore seconds it. And any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. It's approved as stated. So that finishes our agenda. Council, but we, uh, most of the items, and then we have Council Aid of Virtue. Is she? I, there's a post back there. There we go. Council Virtue uh, was not here because of traffic. I wasn't going to mention it, but <laughs> but she wants to make some statements. Welcome, Council. I haven't been down here a while. <laughs> um, good evening, Commissioners. Um, am I the last to to speak yes, before you adjourn? Before the game at six. Oh, okay. Okay, so. <laughs> Let me get all my notes then and just get everything in since I'm the, the last one. Um, I'm Councilwoman Virtue. I represent District 21. And I would like to speak on um, agenda item 12. That's 2019 S 039 001. And I understand that um, that's already been deferred. Um, this is uh, as it relates to 4830 Payne Road. I want to be on the record. Um, requesting a, a deferral um, to the June 13th, uh, 2019 meeting. And the reasoning for that, for that deferral, um, one, there has been no community conversations as it relates to this concept plan. This concept plan isn't like many that come before you. Um, this will be a development that will be across the Mill Creek. This will also be a development that will be um, within close proximity to our only historic house in District 28, and that's Locust Hill. Also, why this concept plan is unique to you, too, because the former director, uh, Mr. Sloan, he came in off his vacation to hear the needs of the neighbors for this particular neighborhood. This neighborhood is one, um, it's, a, it's a gem in the city, and we don't have a lot of them here remaining in Nashville. Um, the homes are primarily brick. Uh, many of the neighbors have been there 35, 40 years plus. They are the original owners, founders of, of, of this neighborhood. Then I want to get speak as it relates to the technicality uh, for this particular developer. They've already gone and excavated and cut down every beautiful tree um, on this parcel. So what does that mean? That means every time there is a light rain, this area is now flooding which it did not happen before um, they cut down all the trees. What they've done, they've gone in and decimated a beautiful area. This neighborhood was, is, still has the potential to be, um, if we can work together and communicate together, not trying to dictate um, what the concept is, but I think um, this developer owes it to, to these neighbors who have fought diligently to one, to have a home deemed historic, which many of you know is, is, is a tough feat in itself. 
um, to, to clean the creek every year. Um, they take a pride in their neighborhood um, that I haven't seen many do here in the city. And when I, I'm, I'm not saying that lightly. These are seniors that come and do creek cleanups. They are in their 50s and their 60s. They're getting wet, they're getting muddy. They come to community cleanups. They come to community meetings because they understand that they have nowhere to go and they are fighting to preserve their quality of their life. And I know it may sound like it's, it's a small fee to you and I know you, you hear this a lot from other from other council members, but this neighborhood, this Deborah Heights neighborhood is, is one that I'm really sensitive over. One, because they don't have an HOA, so they don't have the afforded protections that other neighborhoods have. So everything that they fight and advocate for has been at the mercy of their city and at the mercy of their government. Um, I know he's no longer here, but it meant the world to them when Mr. Sloan, he came in off his vacation to meet with these neighbors. And this is during a time where um, you guys had decided where you were no longer entertaining um, UDOs for, for neighborhoods. Um, I don't know if this neighborhood was the last one that you guys approved or not, um, but um, we ended up putting, putting an overlay for, for that neighborhood um, to give the neighbors um, a, a sense of, one, that your city is listening, and two, that we do have tools in place that can protect you. The downside to that is, is that um, because of our, our growth um, and we have departments that's doing more but less, um, developers like this one, um, they go and do what they're going to do and, and say, you know, find us later. Um, ultimately. So I'm asking for um, the meeting to be deferred publicly on the record. I understand that you've already voted. I'm asking for June because that gives us time to have a, a neighborhood meeting, but also working with Stormwater, the state, and Mill Creek Watershed Association. Um, I don't know if you have time between now um, and before this come up again, but you have to see it. It's a travesty that we still allow developers to go in and cut down every tree. And when I say, uh, I, I text um, Commissioner Betney, Councilman Betney, some of the pictures, it is horrendous. And I don't use that, that term often. It's, it's, a, it's a sight. And um, my heart just goes to the neighbors that have to drive by that every day. My heart goes out to Mr. Estes, who's put an enormous amount of money into restoring the Locust Hill home. Again, the only historic house that we have in, in District 28. Um, so with that, that's that item. I also want to be on the record saying I'm transitioning here, commissioners. I know you're ready to go, I know. I know how that is. We get a lot wrong in the city, but we also get a lot right in the city too. So the agenda items 17A, B, and C, and I know you've already already voted on those too, but I would be remiss if I didn't publicly state that this is how developers should work in conjunction with, with community. And they did an outstanding job. Not only did, not only did they work hand in hand with um, planning staff, they worked hand in hand uh, with stormwater, public works, they're working with TDOT, um, they work with the surrounding businesses, um, the, um, the, the neighborhoods. They came in wanting to be, to be a good neighbor. Um, there was some hesitation at first, because this isn't a grand development. I mean, basically what they're doing is on, on the corner, they're gonna be expanding a gas station. And I know, you know, <laughs> I know that's odd to say, but it's not about the, the, gas, the gas station in itself. It's about the common courtesy, and we have to get back to that as a, as a city. Um, these guys, they are rock stars. They did it, they did it right. Um, they got community input. They met with the businesses. Um, they just, they're, they're, they're class, class A organization. Um, so I wanted to publicly say that and to say that I publicly support it um, along with um, the business organization there for that area and the surrounding neighborhood too. And um, 
Let me see if I can draw this out a little bit longer. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I appreciate everything that y'all do. Um, I know it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a sacrifice and a service, a service to the city. But um, as I was talking about agenda item 12, um, please let that, that touch, that touch your heart. Um, we are on, we're at a pivotal point where we are actually losing some of those old historic neighborhoods that have the character that you just can't buy here in Nashville. So with that, um, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Councilor. So, uh, Councilor Lady, before you leave, you referenced seniors as those of us in our 50s and 60s, which makes up three or four of us in here. Are we old? <laughs> no, so I'm not far from that. I just okay. look good, okay? <laughs> so I, I'm not I'm not far from that. But um, you're out of order. If, if you ever seen it, you have to come to one of my community cleanups and one of my my creek cleanups, and it is it, it's beautiful. Sounds it's, like I'm in that. Right it's beautiful. Right. Well, we'll have you. You can come lift mattresses and tie and toilets and all kind of stuff that we that we pull out the creek. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We appreciate it, Councilor. Thank you very much. And I know that the director is going to take care of that. Councilman. I share with Lisa the pic uh, pictures so we can enter them into the record. That would be great. I already did. Thank you. And we, we take those comments very seriously, so we appreciate that. So we have a few last items, which is... Historic. Commissioner Tibbs, nothing. Parks. No report. No report. Executive Committee. I just want to reiterate how important it is to come to the next workshop, the subdivision workshop, which is. Uh, when is it? April 23rd. April 23rd. And it, are we we're doing it at lunch? Are we having a lunch? Okay, so there's no excuse. You have to eat during the day. You should come, eat lunch, and listen to, and be part of the workshop, because subdivisions, you know, we've had a lot of discussion. Commissioner Sims, I know, is very interested in those things, so she, I know she'll be there. Um, um, what was the Tips? date again that we're going to get these, our monitors fixed? <laughs> <laughs> the last time, the last I heard was early May. I was going to make a motion that we get to swap with that side uh -huh. for one meeting so that I, we're able to not have <laughs> I just we may need the chairman to <laughs> we the chairman can be our may? split vote <laughs> who do we need to talk to director we're working it okay Oh my gosh. I think she seconded it. Yeah. Uh, no. I will second that. That's not a proper motion. <laughs> it's not a proper motion. <laughs> All right, director's report, anything else? Well, I just wanted to um, acknowledge the chairman who joined um, George and Bob and me today at our budget hearing before the mayor. And I really appreciated um, his support. We talked about a lot of things that we care about at the planning department and Mayor asked some good questions. He was joined by the, the finance director as well as his chief of staff. So it was a good discussion. So thank you. And it was Lucy's first time that she they threw presented eggs and she me. did a really good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Nashville. Uh, legislative report, anything, Councilman? Uh, no. Well, we, um, I attended the, uh, an event that the mayor had where he's made a commitment to expand affordable housing uh, funding. And so that was that was a really good event and it's going to uh, increase dramatically, uh, dramatically for Nashville standards. The amount of money we invest on, on affordable housing, which is a, a good thing, uh, I think. And I know many of you here agree with me, so I thought that I wanted to bring you that good news. Uh, I wanted to make a request. Uh, under uh, uh, Doug Sloan, we, had, we were getting information on the reports in council every time that a house had been demolished within the last 12 months uh, on, a, on a property that was uh, being rezoned. <coughs> I'd like to see if we can add a question to any rezoning where they tell us if any trees have been cut down within the last 12 months or if a house has been demolished within the last 12 months. I think that tends to come up often, uh, and it's good information to have. Uh, obviously, it would be great to get a hear on this report, but also in the council as we uh, 
look into a potential rezoning. And Councilman, that's a great request. Let, let me let Lucy and I, let the director and I talk, and then we'll circle back with you and make sure that there's no it, unintended consequences. We'll work on it. All right. It's a great you. request. Thank you. Yeah, I'm making an announcement. Got another motion. What? what? Commissioner um, Sims. Yes. Out of order. Uh, there is a order. conference, a neighborhood conference, Saturday, up to, uh, April the 13th, and I am so proud of our staff. They're going to be presenting all day to neighborhood groups all over the city oh. about planning and zoning, um, altering community plans and zoning, negotiating with developers, and um, hope you'll come. I've got a flyer if you want it um, so you can sign up. But I really appreciate the staff and their Excellent. input into this. Why don't we have the staff send us the info? Thank you. Kelly, I know you. All right. Anything else? Seeing no other business, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.